These changes that we see, some of them pretty last minute, do you feel that this is a correcting of and tightening up perhaps of, of, of some of the eligibility or in fact do you expect full scale dismantling of the H1B? I don't think they've thought it out. They're doing the same stupid things they did with the Muslim ban and now they're haphazardly last second applying it to H-1B visas. This doesn't make sense. I mean, if they're now locking out computer programmers, that means that my students at Carnegie Mellon University, my students at Stanford University can no longer get jobs here. I mean, why do we want to lose these brilliant kids? I mean, they're going to go back to their home countries and uh, it's going to hurt us. It's going to benefit uh, the rest of the world. You were just looking now that the average salary, say, for these high-demand H-1B visas was $72,000. Many have felt that maybe this is what needs to be driven up higher to ensure that this isn't about getting cheaper tech talent in, but the more educated and better tech talent into the United States. Would you agree that H-1B could be changed? How would you advocate it being changed? The H-1B visa is a flawed visa, but the problem is the next step, the green card. Because what happens is that when people have applied for permanent resident visas, they're now stuck in this H-1B visa loop. The easiest fix to the immigration problem, this issue about declining salaries, is to untether the, uh, the visa from the company. In other words, if a company hires someone an H-1B visa and they get a higher, someone offering them a higher salary, then they can leave and continue over there. That would fix the problem in one fell swoop. Why don't we do that? See, um, this way there's no sh cheap labor anymore. So it's more about the green card that needs to be fi fixed. Vivek, you've, you've written at length, I mean, your book, The Immigrant Exodus, Why America is Losing the Global Race to Capture Entrepreneurial Talent. That was at the very heart of this, was the fact that people come to the United States, educate themselves, and then, in fact, are driven home. Is India, is China, where is benefiting, do you think, in fact, from a potential brain drain that's going on? You know, one way of measuring this is to look at the number of unicorns, these billion dollar companies we get excited about. Go back 15 or 20 years, the only ones that existed were in America, more or less. Now you have about 100 of them in, in, in China and India, They're, and, and we have 80 or 90 in the United States. So you know, basically, we're losing our advantage. I mean, we're losing our ability to build innovative companies because we're losing the talent. This is just a lose-lose. It's, it's a brain-dead strategy, frankly. I mean, has, have you done the research to show that those that are being built in China and India are being built by U.S. educated tech talent? Or is this could be this be just the way the developing nations go and indeed Europe playing catch up? They see what Silicon Valley has built and they want to do it themselves, too. No, I actually researched it. I looked at the backgrounds of the the managers of these companies and practically every company has returnees in their management teams, which means that we educated them, we trained them up. And then we told them to go bye-bye and compete with us. And they're the ones who are building these amazing companies. It would be such a loss to America. China now has more innovative technology companies than the U.S. does. Baidu is building better AI than Apple does. Apple is, is copying the designs of uh, some of the social media apps in China. They're copying the designs of phones in China. It's having to copy from China because China is innovating beyond what even Apple can do, which is Apple is considered to be our most innovative company. It has to steal from China to keep competitive. I mean, look at what happened over here. Sad. Sad, changeable. How can we see potentially tech talent fostered within the United States for those who indeed grew up from the very beginning in the United States? You know, us immigrants, we want to come to America. We love America. This is a place to be. So if we simply allowed people to, you know, come here and give them visas, they would come. And yeah, they would make Americans compete. But, you know, um, as long as there's, there isn't a salary disadvantage, competition is good for the country. The problem was when you have cheap labor, when you have indentured servitude, when people are tethered to their companies, that's when the problems occur. Fix that problem and we fix the entire range of problems.